The last three videos have been about Dr. Randy Frost's no matter what rule. Quick review. You set the initial amount of time at something you can do, even if it's only five minutes per day. You move up the amount of time slowly. Don't jump from five minutes per day to 30. You must spend that amount of time working each day, regardless of how you feel. The no matter what rule. This means you must work even though you feel depressed. In fact, you should allow nothing to stop the work, short of being too physically sick to move. This winter, the flu has been hitting a lot of people hard. If you're in bed with the flu, I've got an idea for how you can still squeeze in some no matter what time. If you're up for some mind decluttering, I'd like to recommend a podcast by clinical psychotherapist, Dr. Robert Puff. It's called The Happiness Podcast, and I've learned some really valuable things from him. Don't let the title deter you. It's not about how to smile from ear to ear by turning that frown upside down. It's about how to alleviate the suffering which keeps us from being happy. This podcast has helped me recognize ways in which I cause myself to suffer. Like how having attachments and expectations and creating stories in my mind are what lead to suffering. For example, he talks about how to deal when life isn't fair. I'm sure we've all felt that at some point. I know I have. We suffer from unfairness because we assume life should be fair. But what defines fair? We have so many expectations of how life should go. And when it doesn't go that way, we think it's unfair. The unfairness isn't coming from life. It's coming from our expectations. We know life isn't fair. We've all experienced firsthand how life isn't fair. And yet we expect it to be. So how do we deal with this? We lower our expectations and we have preferences instead of expectations. We relinquish our attachment to things having to work out a certain way. Preferences flow with life instead of fighting life. Preferences can change. If we don't get our first preference, we don't suffer as much because it was just a preference, not an expectation, and we adjust. The concepts he covers make total sense. They're straightforward and simple, but very challenging to execute, at least for me. I've been listening to him for quite a while now, and I'll admit it's taken a long time and lots of repeated listening for the concepts to sink in to the point where I feel I'm beginning to recognize when I'm doing things that cause me to suffer and actually be able to check myself. I've mentioned in earlier videos how beating ourselves up over making a mistake only keeps us stuck, that the way to grow and improve is to instead ask, what can I learn from this? That's something I learned from Dr. Puff's podcast. Lately, I've actually found myself on occasion going straight to that question after making a mistake instead of berating myself like I usually do. And I'm like, whoa, what just happened? Who is that kind person? Now it's not automatic for me. I'm still working on exercising that muscle so it becomes more of a habit. Lots of times I start out berating myself, but later find my way to asking, what can I learn from this? And I'm telling you, it has really helped. Episode 100 is called Three Steps to Happiness When Life Sucks. And there have been many days I felt my life sucked because of how hoarding negatively affects me. So this episode is one of my go-tos. The podcasts are about 10 to 15 minutes. They're not a big time commitment. I put them on my little iPod shuffle so I can listen to them on walks or when I'm at the gym. Dr. Pop has a soft, calming voice, so the podcasts are also bedtime friendly. I'll post the link to his website below and hope you'll check it out, whether you're bedridden with the flu or not, which I'm hoping you're not.